Hi, thanks for joining us for our daily reflection on the Eastertide Lectionary. We take the portion of scripture the church invites us to read, whether it be at Mass or another liturgy, and we take a little time to reflect on it. And uh, we're up today, Monday the 25th of May. It's Monday in the seventh week of Eastertide, the final week of Easter, and the Sunday between uh, the Feasts of the Ascension and Pentecost. Um, a particular time of prayer, a novena, nine days of prayer, asking for the gifts of God's Holy Spirit, because the Acts of the Apostles tell us of the effects of the gifts of God's Holy Spirit. So the Church invites us to read about the effects and to pray for the cause. So we read about the effects for 50 days, uh, and during which we pray for the cause of those effects, the Holy Spirit. And we are believers in seeking those gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Pentecost Day is a particular a significant day in the church's year, and um, the third most important feast after Easter and Christmas. So let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God our Father, these 50 days of Easter tide, we've prayed for the gifts of your Holy Spirit, and it is with particular fervour and devotion that we do so in these nine days between Ascension and Pentecost. Signs and wonders are worked by those who are your witnesses after they receive the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is necessary for the completion of our call to the second ship. So gift us, encourage us, sustain us, we pray, through that same gift, so that we may produce the same effects and fruitfulness in your world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, every Monday seems to bring something uh, new and exciting that unfolds through the week. Uh, but the act is drawing to a close, and it draws to a close very la rapidly. We could probably do with another three or four weeks of Easter tide uh, to take our time. We spent uh, a lot of time at the beginning in the mission in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, um, and uh, a lot of time here and there in Asia Minor and in Greece. Um, but uh, we're getting we're getting to the end, and, and, and the pace rather hots up. Um, but uh, we're concentrating on the message uh, uh, and not the words. So um, what goes on in the background in terms of travel um, doesn't really uh, matter so much. Uh, though geography is kind of significant because where you are and who you're talking to depends on how you tell them what you're going to tell them, uh, as we've discovered. So um, to, to, to bear that in mind, but uh, we've got, a, we've got a, an introduction today which is significant for reasons that I told you about last week, when we were first introduced to Apollos. Uh, we found that uh, he was um, very good at some things, but hadn't been fully uh, briefed about others. And as I said to you then, we would, we would find a very intriguing example this week, and indeed we do today. And uh, Tuesday and Wednesday are two parts of one long speech that Paul gives as a farewell to the elders in Ephesus. Very powerful, very moving. Um, um, but we'll, we'll come to that. So, from the Acts of the Apostles. From Miletus, Paul sent for the elders of the church of Ephesus. And while Apollos was in Corinth, Paul made his way overland as far as Ephesus, where he found a number of disciples. When he asked, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They answered, No, we were never even told there was such a thing as a Holy Spirit. Then how were you baptised? he asked. With John's baptism, they replied. John's baptism, said Paul, was a baptism of repentance. But he insisted that the people should believe in the one who was to come after him. In other words, Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptised in the name of the Lord Jesus. And the moment Paul had hands laid on them, the Holy Spirit came down on them. And they began to speak with tongues and to prophesy. There were about 12 of these men. He began by going to the synagogue where he spoke out boldly and argued persuasively about the kingdom of God. And he did this for about three months. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, um, the, the address to the elders of Ephesus, of course, follows on. And we have this introductory section of Paulus. Now, remember we encountered Apollos last week. Uh, he was uh, visiting, um, came to the Apostles, he spoke eloquently 
a new well of the Lord Jesus, but not of the full story. So they uh, further briefed him, and then because he was a good guy, they sent him on to do work for them and with them. So he's at Corinth, and Paul arrives, and they discover these disciples, but they are disciples of John the Baptist and the work of Jesus. So, John the Baptist, the precursor of Jesus, you remember that from Luke's Gospel well, uh, and how he moved aside. He must in peace, I must in peace, he says, of Jesus. So, interesting, he must have had a huge effect in the Mediterranean area, because here in Corinth, we've got people who are still followers of John the Baptist. And I think we as, as followers of the Lord Jesus probably underestimate that and we recognise that um, in us the, um, the, uh, the, the, the story is unfolding and uh, being made complete. So it's, uh, it's a, a, an interesting presentation of the reality um, and one which uh, is intriguing in its own way. So the uh, presentation of that reality is, is one is, um, is worthy of our attention. I, I, I dislike the way um, Paul says John's baptism was only a baptism of repentance, but he insisted that the people should believe in the one who was to come after him. In other words, Jesus. So, baptism for repentance, that was what John the Baptist preached. There's more to the Christian life than that. Um, it's only about repentance. Well, we're about a lot more than that. We're about the gifts of God's Holy Spirit. We're about uh, doing something a little bit more than simply repenting. And that's important. You know, uh, there are people who, who kind of spend their time worrying about their sins. Oh, come on. Um, we've received the Holy Spirit. We're supposed to be up and out there um, and making known the work of God. It's, uh, it's not about sitting at home saying, I am not worthy. Um, it's about saying, I am worthy. Uh, insofar as I can be, yes, I need repentance, but that's not the story. The story is we do that and then we go on with it with a spirit of optimism and a spirit of hope and um, indeed a spirit of faith and of love as well. So, um, only a baptism of repentance, but it's not the whole story. And of course, then uh, Paul has hands laid on them, notice, uh, it's interesting, and they received the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in tongues and to prophesy just as the apostles did themselves when they first received the Holy Spirit. And a big red flag is then waved. There were about 12 of these men. Hmm, I wonder why. So, it's about continuity, it's about handing on, it's about recognising that the gifts which change the lives of the apostles will change the lives of these people too. Um, very powerful. Remember I talked about invitation? How Paul imitates Peter, who imitates Jesus both in what is said and what is done, as what is said about and done to, well, the handing on continues. And, and we're supposed to spot the red flag and say, ha, ah, so I'm a disciple. I've had the baptism for repentance, yes. But I've also received the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Am I to speak in people's language? Am I to communicate well with them? In their tongues? Am I to prophesy? Not foretell the future, but know the will of God and speak of it. You betcha. That's exactly what I'm called to do. So, there we go. Paul's speech to the elders at Ephesus the next two days. I hope that uh, today all is well with you. Let's end with a prayer to St. Rock. O blessed St. Rock, patron of those afflicted in plague, have pity on those who lie upon a bed of suffering. Your power was so great when you were in this world that by the sign of the cross many were healed of their diseases. Now that you are in heaven, your power is not less. Offer then to God our hopes and prayers, and obtain for us all the health we seek, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So, Rock, pray for us that we may be preserved from all diseases of body and soul. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we've begun the final week of Eastertide uh, together. I hope you're well, hope together with your family, your friends and your neighbours, you're caring for one another as well as for yourselves, and that you stay safe, safe, and safe and well. So give it time time. Um, remember our daily prayer for the gifts of God's Holy Spirit. Remember the month of May, particularly we seek the intercession of Mary, the Mother of the Lord Jesus, 
uh, herself transformed, you recall, yesterday, the Sunday reading, uh, transformed uh, in prayer, together with the apostles from that locked room to uh, the um, fearless proclamation of the Lord. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.